Hello, my astrology friends and family. This is Lada from astrolada.com. And today for us is back the beautiful and extremely bright Michelle, who is uh, the most uh, personal student of Nikola Stojanovic and who uh, first interview she introduced us to remedies that she actually created together with Nikola Stojanovic. Uh, may he rest in peace. And she's back with another fascinating topic today. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Lana. Thanks for having me back. I've been having such a great time working with everybody, and I'm excited to announce this new reading. I actually, you know, I'm a Reiki master, and a while back ago, I enrolled in a course to be a certified crystal um, energy guide. And through that, I did that for the Reiki master, you know, to um, heal people with crystals. But through it, I realized how I can help people astrologically because Saturn rules crystals. You understand what, how a crystal is actually made and the pressure and everything that the amount of years, it's Saturn that rules it. So I started giving remedies to people with Saturn, you know, and I just thought once I got my certification, I have to share it with people because it's, you know, it's simple little techniques that we can do. It's whether we're looking at transits, whether we're looking at what your natal Saturn is, because obviously you carry that energy for the rest of your life. So how do you manage it, you know? And then, um, you know, any aspects that it makes, what houses it rules. So there's so many different angles that I've been looking at it, but I've, I've gotten so many good results with just sharing it with people that I thought, hey, this needs to be just a separate little reading that I can do and find, you know, easy remedies for people to use with their Saturn. Uh, is it just for Saturn? And because they can be used for any planet, can they? Any planet, any planet. So it's not just for Saturn. Originally, like I said, it was the interest of creating the remedies through the birth charts was because of Saturn. But we can typically use it for anything, you know, and a lot of the things that I go through when I sit down with somebody is really asking a few different questions as far as like how they're feeling and what kind of symptoms they have or what type of challenges that they're going through. And, and we use a lot of colors, you know, we have, we use like a color wheel and we talk about different colors that they're, they might be feeling that they're experiencing. And, you know, so it's tailored that way. So it doesn't just have to be for, for Saturn, we can do it for Venus, you know, you have Venus right now and in Capricorn, you know, which obviously goes back to Saturn because it, it's in that, but you know, you think about what Saturn, you know, represents is like your values and time and, and money, you know, in Capricorn, you know, my, my interpretation of this with, with Venus retrograde, which I was helping people with is that, you know, Capricorn is time. So you have Venus, how are you spending Venus is spend, how are you spending your time? You know, now that it's with Mars, are you spending it wisely with the right people? Are you spending your energy wisely with the right people? You know, are you, you know, are you spending your money in the right places? And then we can look at like your chart and see where it's transiting. And that gives me even more clues of different ways that you can help. And, you know, we earlier talked about Mercury, you know, Mercury is the thinker. Sometimes, you know, I have um, Mercury conjunct Venus in Virgo and that can make you because the uh, mercury is the you know the analyzer you know and you can over analyze things in your life you know venus things you love you can over analyze stuff and really get your mind you know spinning and constantly think going over each thing over and over and over again and that can get very tedious you know so there's crystals that you can use to help with that you know, and then also people get nervous, you know, Aquarius season right now, people get really nervous. So there's, there's crystals that we can use that can help decrease anxiety, stress, um, helping sleep, you know, but it's what, what I love about it is that, you know, a lot of people get caught up on searching crystals by their name and by their meanings. But I like that looking at it because when we look at the energy, um, you know, you have your chakras that represent specific, uh, you know, colors. 
But if you have an overstimulation, instead of using the color that people are typically used to, we have to use the opposite color to kind of replenish. So it's not just being the typical, oh, use, use this black crystal to ground you, you know, what is it that you need to be grounded from? Mm -hmm. Hold on one second. So, sorry, that's shut my door. <laughs> that, that's exactly a question I wanted to ask you because, for example, I'm having Saturn transit now. And okay. the most people, in, and, and having a Saturn transit in the first house feels uh -huh. very groggy. You're tired, your immune system is down. I'm sick every month <laughs> for 10 yeah. to 12 days. It's, uh, you start feeling your age. Uh, you kind of like, there's, you feel meh and blah. Like you don't get much joy from anything. And Saturn is opposing my moon even worse. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's kind of like things that used yeah. to be pleasure and joy now right. are not. And, but everyone, people, you know, the normal remedy would be aware of stone of Saturn. But I don't want more Saturn energy. So No, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, how would you work yeah. with something like that? Yeah, well, first, I'll tell you the remedy for Saturn transiting your first house. So Saturn is always the one who puts the restrictions and brings the doom and gloom. And this is a Nicola thing. He's like, you have to beat Saturn to the punch. So you have to say no first. So no matter what somebody asks you to do, you know, you instantly have to say, thank you for inviting me, you know, to do this interview. Let me look at my schedule and I'll get back with you. You know, so you're not directly saying no, but you're, you're, you're putting a delay on it. Because if you don't put the delay, other things, Saturn's going to make those delays so that you're home, so that you're sick, so that you have all these restricts, restrictions and blockages. So you have to take control over your life, which is Saturn control, but it's your you're first house. It's you. It's your, your first steps. So that's the first thing that is extremely important when you have Saturn transiting is really just, you know, Learn to say, say no. no. <laughs> Learn to say no. Learn to say no. But do it in a constructive, you know, e simple way of just um, let let me look back. Let me look into it. Let me see what my schedule is, you know. And that way, then you can just get back to just say, I'll let you know later on. Uh, give me an hour to think about it, or let me talk with you know Matt or whatever the case may be. But you have to put you have to put the delays, Even, whether you're making the decision or whatever it does, you just have to stop Saturn right away. Yeah, and I'm so noticing when I jump to do something, if if I jump immediately, no, immediately breaks, something breaks, exactly. sick, all my work gets canceled, all the projects I'm working on, they're dragging, oh my yeah. God, crazy. So, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. something I can do with crystals, you say? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, with when you're looking, so what, what you're explaining is, it, you know, a lot of um, what we need is strengthening of your immune system. So I think you can even do like gold, something gold, something yellow, you know, tiger's eye is a really good, you know, strong crystal that you can do. It brings joy, it brings strength, it brings power. And so, so the opposite you, of Saturn. you go to the opposite. Exactly. Like the sun. Oh, yeah. The sun. Exactly. Because what brings you joy in life? Yellow. <laughs> Yellow. Exactly. exactly. And, and you know, do, do you, let me think about if I remember you have a Leo moon, right? Yes, it's oh. so suppressed now. <laughs> always oh, see, that, cracks that's the at home, always stuck at home, no going out, no yeah. trying to restrict, like no partying, no drinking. It's just like mm -hmm. everything is so boring. It's and and I can't do the little things that I want because it's not good for my health. So I <laughs> yeah I have to find other ways. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so, you know, um, Tiger's Eye is so good because um, it, it teaches you how to tap into your resources, you know, it helps you achieving your goals, but it also brings joy and also citrine. Citrine is such, it, it blocks any negative energies, but it's gold and it's, it, it that's a powerful stone and it brings joy. So when you look, I look at the colors and it's like, well, what are you experiencing in your life right now? And then how are we going to bring that into your life? And yellow is joy, you know? And so that's, that's a great, that's a great crystal for you to use for that. Is it for between sure. Jupiter stone? 
Is it true in the Jupiter stone? Um, so it's for I mean, Julia as well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it. Jupiter always represents something joyous and, and happy and adventures and larger than life. And so, you know, definitely it's it, it's always going to the opposite. You know, another good thing for you to do because um, Saturn is is to get grounded you know and you can just walk outside and it's probably cold there for you so <laughs> um but connecting with the ground with your bare feet is really good too because connecting with the earth you know um and you can use black crystals too not in the sense how thick should the crystal be when you say citrine oh you can do a little look is that little yeah that's a that you can because you can you can just hold this so I have these two and I hold one in each hand in the morning and I just close it and just thank, you know, thank to be grounded today because Saturn is about grounding and it does represent black, you know, and ironically black, you get the color black by combining all of the colors at once. Um. So it's, it's everything all together. So you have the power to pull any color that you need out of it. So it's not so much the doom and gloom. I don't think black now, as I learned about it, I don't look at it as the doom and gloom of the black because you can pull the strength out of any color that you need through it. Mm -hmm. So by, by holding the two, you know, in both hands and just taking like four deep breaths and just saying that, you know, you want to be, thank you for the grounding. It's all about intention about what you say with the crystals, you know, thank you for grounding me. Thank you for being a practical day today, you know, and just taking nice deep breaths, holding them tight in, in your hands. And it's a great way to ground yourself. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, those are things, especially with Saturn in the first house, it's nice to just kind of feel that, you know, just get yeah. grounded every morning. And it's something that can only take a couple of seconds in the morning. It's not a big ritual. I, I like rituals. I like doing things, but I also want it to be simple and practical that you can do in your everyday life and something that can be an easy, an easy thing where you just get up in the morning, grab your crystals and some women will stick them in their bra. Some will stick them in their purse in their pocket and then it just goes with you throughout the day and you don't really have to put too much energy into a specific you know protocol when you're doing when you when you find the crystal that you need and and for example a lot of people that are having saturn heart transits now uh, many will be having also uranus because heart transits like the leo mm -hmm. the aquarians the tauruses the scorpios would you give us some cr remedy crystal for uranus the uranus energies like the opposite of Saturn, where Saturn everything feels heavy, dull, uh, monotonous. Uh, with Uranus, mm -hmm. it's like, what the hell just happened? If you 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 yeah. grounding under your feet, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. Red, nervous. What, what what stones would help with that? Well, I think you know when you look at um, you know Aquarius, and ironically because it's you know the previous ruler was Saturn to it, right? So you know, and it always wants to you know have new things, you know. Um, and Moonstone is really good for that because Moonstone is about a stone of new beginnings, but it also helps with balancing your emotions. So that's uh, Moonstone is a great stone for that, you know. Um, and I then another the transits. Yes, for Uranus transits. Yep. Ground. yep. Yes. Yeah, because it represents Uranus transits. My emotions were all over the place, like, and uh, that's extreme and that's, <laughs> exhilaration <yeah>. and horror. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so you know, a good one for you would be you know is labradorite because it is the stone of transformation. So you know, Uranus is trying to get you to change. And if it's trying to change your emotions, you need something to help stabilize you while you are going, going through those changes. And Labradorite is, a, they call it the stone of transformation. And, and you can get a small little stone, you know, and you can just keep it with you. And it's also great for developing your intuition because you know, you know, Aquarius has those quick insights and it's a future-based sign. Um, you know, Uranus represents the future base because it rules Aquarius, but, you know, it's um, trying to ground it because, you know, Uranus being in, in Taurus right now, 
this will help ground as well the labradorite. Thank you. And what about Neptune transits? For example, Pisces and mm -hmm. uh, Gemini's the, from 20 to 25 degrees or Sagittarians and uh, uh, Virgos from 20 to 25 degrees are having Neptune this whole year. Or if you have Neptune in your natal chart, what would you give us a remedy? Because that's such a lost energy. <laughs> I mean, it's so it confusing. is. <laughs> it is. You know, it's... I like Pisces in the fact that it's, you know, just kind of goes with the flow, um, but also can get lost in its, you know, um, it lost in its thoughts. It can get the, uh, the rose colored glasses that you put on. So kyanite is a good crystal because it cuts through the illusion and the confusions. Okay. So, and that's where I think like the thinking is, is a big problem <laughs> when it comes to Pisces because they could be daydreaming, they can be over analyzing things when it comes to that. Um, and another thing is that um, blue lace agate because it helps distinguish between your mind and emotions and it, it, it can enhance your imagination, but it can also, um, it also helps with your way of thinking. So <laughs> looking at like blue, you know, you're looking at like, Pisces is like blue, so think of blue stones for that. But of course, you know, if if we're in too, too much, you know, then we want to go to something, the opposite sec spectrum of that, which would be an orange. So we would do like a carnelian, you know, to really bring you back and, and to bring some sort of power because sometimes they don't have the power that they, that they need, you know, so. Yes, I remember with Neptune transits, I felt like I was tossed. And I felt mm -hmm. like small and like I had no control over things. And yeah. something as well to, to empower you, not to feel yeah. victim. Yeah. And another one too is bloodstone because bloodstone will help, helps keep, keep them grounded, but also helps um, bring it in the intuition as well. So that's another, that's another good stone that you can use for that. For well, sure. Thank you. Or what about... Uh, we're coming on to Mars towards the end of the year, October to January or something, November till next year. Mars will be retrograde and it will affect a lot of people who are the uh, signs, uh, Gemini in particular, all of Gemini's will be affected, yeah. all of Sagittarius will be affected, all of Pisces and all of Virgos will be affected by long time Mars transits. Can you give remedy to balance the, the, the anger, the stress, the accident proneness, the, in, in, the, the kind of the suppressed anger as well. What, what would be? Oh, well, I actually natally have Mars in Gemini, so I know this sign all too well. <laughs> so, you know, the good thing, um, and Nicole and I had hours discussions about <laughs> my Mars in Gemini, but you know is using using the energy correctly you know it's in the first house for me so i actually do boxing you know i get up in the morning and and i box you know I, yeah I, it's to me it's it's the best thing first thing in the morning because it's right on my ascendant it's literally zero degrees of gemini so it sits right at the top so I have to get up and I have to use my energy, right? So it's not, doesn't have to just be physically. Tai Chi is another good way because you're using your hands and you're, you're using energy. So you can do Taekwondo, you can do kickboxing, you can do boxing. You can even just on your own, if you're not an athlete or sometimes when I don't, that's what I do. I do Tai Chi. I have to do something different. You can also go walk. You, yeah, you, hands, 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 always something with your hands. But you can also walk. Because, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you can walk. So go outside, walk. You don't have to run. If you like to run, great. You know, you can do it. But it's, it's using your muscles because Mar Mars represents your muscles, you know. So you want to do something physical. Yeah, for and all Mars transits, do something physical. Specific. Do something physical. The one that's coming now in Gemini. It's starting from August 2022 till March 2023. It's a yeah. very good idea for a lot of us to do something. Walking, yeah, you're right. <laughs> walking, yeah, that's simple. You know, just yeah. go for a little walk, 
walk around the block, you know, by yourself, just, you know, it's, it's soothing. It's, it's soothing if you can't do that. And, and, and if you really are in a bind and you don't like to, you can't go walking and you can't, you know, you don't, I have my own boxing bag here that I can go hit, but you can just get a pillow. You can scream into a pillow and you can hit it. Right. It's simple. It's just a, it's just a little something that you can do, but you want to use the energy effectively. And Mars, you know, it, it governs energy, you know, cause it's the ruler, previous ruler of, of Scorpio too. So you really want to harness the energy and I, Tai Chi to me is one of the amazing ways where you can just build your energy every day and, and channel it that way. So that, that's a really good thing. Now, now the shadow side to, to Mars and Gemini is that it can get very aggressive with speaking, you know, <laughs> I know it, you know, and ironically, astrology has really helped me learn myself, you know, realize when I can get higher and a little forceful with my tone or say certain things. So now I just really stop because you know it can get really fast mars speaks fast and just lets everything come out so mm -hmm. understanding that i have to take a pause think about it for a second because gemini is to think so stop think before you before you speak so there you know it, it's it be a big lesson for all of us for seven it's months a, it's, a, it's a big <laughs> August, <laughs> like stop before yeah. you think. What are you saying? What influence do your words have? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But there's definitely some crystals that we can use that that can help that. Um, and you know, let me think. I know aquamarine is a good one um, that helps filter out like what you're gonna say, you know, um, and gets rid of, I know it has like excess thoughts. So I know aquamarine, it's a, it's a beautiful little crystal. Um, and it's something that just kind of- Yes, um, excess thoughts, cause Mars and uh, Gemini, people oh. really like they can't sleep, they're thinking, 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 yeah? I yeah. have in the third house, so I know what Mars and Gemini is. That's why I speak yes. fast as well. That's why I get yeah. out of breath, so it's- Yeah. Wow, yeah. That, that's great aquamarine. Thank you. Great. Yeah, aquamarine is a good one. Let me think. Um, I know there's probably, I'm thinking of another blue one. Um, maybe, or actually, how light can be one because it also calms your mind. Um, and, it, and, and I think it can help with... Um, the communication so it doesn't feel like it's very intense or that it's because it just is a calming so it'll it'll help you while you're speaking and just every day because you know gemini's can get nervous too because they're over analyzing stuff as well so that that i think how, how light would be a good one too because i know it helps with turning off extra thoughts oh, and it's a very quieting one and you can even put that under your pillow at night and it can help you if you if you're an overthinker who wakes up in the middle of the night and thinks and thinks, you can put that inside your pillowcase and yeah. 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 It will be the same Mercury in Aries or Mars in Gemini or Mercury or, uh, or, or, you know, like you can twist. These people always have very busy minds as well. Or Mars yeah. in the third house. So, well, yeah. What about I in Vedic, in ancient astrology, for example, in Vedic, they would recommend you to wear the stone of your ascendant to strengthen your health, but they would mm -hmm. really advise you against wearing the stone of the sign in the sixth house from your ascendant. Oh. For example, because that's where illness is, imbalance. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, someone who is Aquarius rising, Cancer in the sixth house, they should not wear moonstone unless right. they're pregnant or they're in the moon dash or something. Oh. Say like you, you with pearls or moonstones. So have you seen anything like that or you haven't paid attention to such things? It learns too much of Vedic. That's definitely something I would love to look into because they have so they have a whole different remedy system for yeah. you know, it's they're really interesting and I do read a lot of their stuff, but for me to actually learn that, not really. I haven't learned that, you know. Um it, it it sounds to me like what 
I look at when, you know, we talk about somebody who has something overactive, we go to the other side and, and we're not using the stone because if you have something where you have, you know, overactive thoughts, you know, we don't want you to use that. We want to, we want to balance it and we want to calm the energy down. So we go to the opposite spectrum of the color that it typically represents or the emotions too, because I look at it and I don't just, you know, look at, like I said, um, specific crystals that everybody associates with different, you know, um, signs and stuff like that. It's all about how you're feeling and what you're going through. It's more holistic. Yeah. Cause yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's looking at the, at the person as a whole. And, you know, if you have, if you have a lot of anger, definitely not going to say, yeah, go get a red crystal because you're Aries and no, we have to calm, yeah. calm the energy down. That's so it's, I wanted to hear. Yeah, yeah, it's, oh, it's you know, I wear red coral and I'm like, I get antsy when I wear That's, it. Yeah. Cause then it's too much energy. You are, you already have the energy, you know? So there's, there's other colors that you can do to help strengthen your power, you know, because Aries can be rash. It could be abrupt as well. It can be quick, you know, so if you want to step into your power, you can use more green stones. Malachite is, is, is a very powerful stone that you can use that will neutralize that, but still give you that power and still give you that tenacity that you're an Aries is looking for, but not so overly strong as a red crystal would be. So mm. then another yeah. question. Someone has a really beat up Venus in their chart. Venus, the joint Saturn, square Neptune, opposite Mars, whatever. Let's not okay. just, it's it's a and this person has low self-esteem, they have problems with relationships, they're very touchy. Oops, sorry. No, you're good. A very touching relationship, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's and, and they do their own choices about themselves. They choose mm -hmm. things that are not healthy for them, like food, like uh, lifestyle, like relationships. How would you remedy a beat up Venus? I think I would have to see all of that, but um, you know, knowing that a black crystal contains all of the colors. And if it has a lot of aspects, that would be definitely a good stone because it can get them to be grounded. It can keep them to learn how to say no, how to learn boundaries because they can pull up, you know, every color. Also like a clear quartz, like this is my master quartz. So getting something like that, like I have a, a bracelet and I just wear it to keep, you know, because clear does the same thing like the black you know it's everything in one it reflects everything so you know that would probably just off the top of my head i would say a black crystal would help because it definitely pulls pulls everything and helps ground them for sure that would just be instant you know stone for more self-love self-appreciation oh self-love oh definitely like rose quartz Rose quartz is an easy one because it is, it is the, it heals the heart, you know, and, and ironically, you know, malachite is a very, you know, because pink and green represent the heart chakra. So, you know, you can do for higher love, you can really use a malachite, a nice deep green. And that is, it, it's definitely, I, I have my malachite on. <laughs> so I mean that. I, I've heard malachite. Yeah quite the new stone as well mm. uh, it's not uh, it's beautiful <laughs> it's beautiful yeah absolutely you, you notice that sometimes someone can wear a stone and they shouldn't be wearing it like is there sometimes that energies can clash how would person recognize i don't really think as much i think it's all about the intention so what what is your intention with the stone you know because you know every stone should be cleansed it should be charged it should be you put your own intention to it like what it is that you want the stone to help you with and you know because you can use you can use any crystal any crystal could be programmed with how you how you want it if you are attracted to if you go to a store and you see one that you really like there's no reason why you don't buy it, you know, when you get it, cleanse it, and then put the intention that you want on it. You know, I want this, this crystal to help me to my highest good, to connect me to love, to open me up to communication. 
and then that's the intention you put on the crystal. So it, it doesn't necessarily always have to be a specific color or that the crystal was made for this because you can program your crystals too. That's what's amazing about it is that you can, you can program it to what you need. But I bet it will be much more powerful when it's the energy of the crystal natural aligns. With Absolutely. It, it definitely is. It definitely is. But as far as like, you know, I think there's probably some properties that don't go too well together. And I think intuitively people kind of, some people do know, some people don't know, but you know, I think from how I've been working on it, it's just been, I, I don't put too many crystals. So that's another thing. I'm not putting, you know, 10 crystals all over your body or telling you, you know, it's, it's typically two to three because you don't want to overstimulate and you don't want to, you know, it, it, it doesn't need that many crystals. And some people, even though I might say this is a good crystal for X, Y, Z, sometimes when they put it on themselves, it's too much. So it's always good to start low, you know, one to three crystals at, at a time. Mm -hmm. And you can do other things like Saturn with, look, we got crystals in your water, you know, mm -hmm. you're having a transit with the moon right now with Saturn, which is, which is water. So I have ah, crystal, crystal, Saturn. crystal, crystal, Saturn, water. I was drinking. <laughs> and I do That's that because good. I don't like cold water and Saturn represents something cold and the moon represent, you know, my Saturn is in cancer. I don't, I don't like cold water. So I drink, I drink with crystals. Yep. Stone water. <laughs> you drink stone, stone water. water. Exactly. Exactly. I love your images. It's they're fascinating. So easy to use. <laughs> it's uh, that they. This is one thing that thanks to you and Nikola Stianovich we all discovered and we've gone crazy about. <laughs> By the way, if anyone wants a reading with Michelle, she she does remedy readings. Actually, she's offering it a thirty percent discount now for hundred and twenty something dollars only. For, for the for the next 30 orders only and then we stop it because she'll get a bit overwhelmed and and again I repeat she was one of the closest if not the closest student of Nikola Stojanovic and she knows all his method they developed together remedies uh, she <laughs> gave many remedies to Nikola Stojanovic <laughs> together that they thought of so this is uh, fantastic if you'd like some help on your path of discovery and, and energetically takes off some of the negative transits pressures and it reminds you just like you always carry something sweet in your pocket what was it yeah oh yeah. honey yes you have mercury and venus in virgo yep. mercury yep. is something small venus is something sweet in virgo and healthy. In something healthy so she always carries a pocket of honey in her, for this combination and you, it always reminds you, makes you become more conscious, conscious of. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes. Yeah, so yes, uh, you also are offering a reading for crystals, uh, yes. as I see, and I'm looking forward again for more exciting topics. <laughs> yeah, the, the reading for crystals is a 30-minute reading, and we'll look at your chart and just look at where Saturn's at natally where it's transiting and any other planets it doesn't that's why i didn't name it saturn remedies it's yeah. any planet in your chart we can look and give quick little remedies that you can use you know with crystals in particular with crystals absolutely perfect. Yeah. thank you so much michelle wonderful to have you here looking thank forward you for to having me. and have a great day bye bye you too. thank you bye